We are back in the main room of the Forbidden Woods, and we are about done with this dungeon. We're just gonna break these. We're about to head into the final wing of the dungeon. This was the door from earlier that I could have unlocked with uh, the nut that could be found upstairs, but I decided against it because it just wasn't worth uh, the time and effort. So here, we got two more uh, wingless Mothulas here. Here's one down, and the other one is right there. Oh, man, I wanted to, I wanted to try and maybe evade it, but... Didn't work so well. Anyway, wasn't so difficult. Uh, oh, we're about to get a treasure too because uh, yeah, just gaining access to the next room wasn't enough. Let me guess, joy pendant. Yep, I was right, and it's not because I knew it beforehand. It's just that a lot of these uh, useless chests have joy pendants, especially at this point in the game where we uh, haven't started uh, getting. Uh, Skull necklaces and knight's crests in a greater number, so let's see what... Ow! Thanks for the sucker punch, dude! I was just looking for a heart to heal myself, and not gonna find it there. Um, okay, here's another one. <laughs> and there's gotta be a heart somewhere. There are a lot of these, and uh, not all of them, as you can see, have a green chew inside them. Okay, here we go. Now we're good. So... Just going to uh, open up that cauldron over there, just in case I have to uh, come back here for some weird reason. So let's open this up and open the door that leads to the boss. Now, as I've said before, the bosses in this game are incredibly easy, and this one is no exception. And hey, look! We found Makar, who's standing in the single most unsafe spot you could ever think of. You fool! You fool! So yeah, just got eaten by the boss. This is Kale Demos. And as you might expect, he requires the massive use of the dungeon's treasure, which is the boomerang, you know, just in case you forgot, because it's not like we didn't use it much in this dungeon. That was sarcasm, of course. Anyway, what you want to do, um, didn't have a very good angle here, but what you want to do, uh, the, the main part of Kali Demos is attached to the ceiling with those vines, so what you want to do while trying to evade uh, the attacks that it's going to be doing with the, the vines that come out of the lower part of its body, you want to uh, smash all the vines that are connected to the ceiling with the boomerang and... Yep, we got it! So now's the time to attack the weak point for magic damage. I'm mashing the button like crazy. Come on! You ah! At least I did, I did a huge amount of damage with that. Fortunately, that attack it just did cost me a heart, but I, I guess it's that you're, you're expected to back off before it does that. But I think it's just far more beneficial to just attack it as much as you can and maybe take it down in a one less cycle. And okay, there was, there was still a few more left over there. Down it goes, and... I only needed one more hit! I was one hit away from... Knocking it out in just one cycle, that would have been amazing. And for our trouble, we get a heart container and we also get Makar back. Good thing, too, because um, it would have been very un-Zelda-esque, if you will, if Makar had actually died from being swallowed by Kali Demos. Now, before we leave this place, one nitpicky detail. We've established that Makar got here because he flew over the Forbidden Woods. However, as you can see, this room is closed. There's a roof. And the one before this one, too. And the one before as well. So, wherever he got in, he must have faced some of the, of the rabid beasties we, that we fought on our way here. So, how the fuck did he survive to come this far anyway? I don't know, just a random thought, something that, uh, something to ponder while we uh, grab the hard container and leave this dungeon. And as we just reminded Makar of, through the power of our epic muteness, we still have a ceremony to attend to. Uh, the Deku Tree promised us that he would give us uh, Faror's Pearl as soon as the ceremony was complete, so we're going to have to take care of that. And... Fortunately for Makar, the Deku Tree seems rather happy to see him back. He doesn't look angry or anything, which is good news for Makar, who's crying his eyes out. 
He's afraid that the Deku Tree is going to spank him, even though he's not properly equipped to do that if you catch my drift. So, um, you're giving me the pearl now? Are you serious? Didn't you, didn't you have a ceremony to do or something? A really important ceremony that if not performed, an ill fate could befall you? Then why didn't you give me the pearl in the first place if you could give it to me before the ceremony? Oh well, maybe I should just stop nitpicking for now. I got the pearl, uh, Makar is rescued, the ceremony will take place, all is well, and uh, the Deku Tree is apparently going to allow us to um, witness the ceremony firsthand. So let's take a look at what the, the ceremony they made such a huge deal out of actually is. So I'm just gonna shut up since it's an, an inappropriate time for me to comment over it. And thus, the purpose of the ceremony is unveiled. This is how the Deku Tree produces its seeds, and the role of the Koroks is to take these seeds to various islands on the Great Sea and tend to the trees as they grow. And obviously, uh, if you think this is going to be all we see of them, then you are wrong, because they're going to be the subject of a timed side quest later on. And... Uh, Actually, I say later on, we could attempt it right now, but there's no way, absolutely no way, we could possibly succeed at doing this side quest if we were to attempt it now. So we're just going to let the Koroks go for now and catch up with them at a later date. So, we are almost done in this area. There's just one more thing that I want to take care of while I'm here. If you head all the way over there behind the Deku Tree, over there, you're going to see a firefly that actually looks different from the rest, as in you can actually catch it in a, in a bottle. So let's just release this fairy and grab the firefly instead. And I strongly recommend that you catch one right now because it's is going to come in very handy in not too long, actually. So here we go. We caught a forest firefly, uh, which reminds me, I should uh, probably check out those uh, see those uh, treasure charts that I got. So this one, uh, no idea, actually. This one, one of the fairy islands, Angular Isles. And uh, this one, it's uh, one of the coral reefs that are all over the Great Sea. I have no idea which one this is. So, yeah, now we're completely done with the Forest Haven. Uh, there are a few things that we're going to uh, come back for later on. But for now, we are done with this place so we can move on to our next destination. So we're just going to head back to the King of Red Lions to get our debriefing on uh, what to do next. I guess, I guess it involves Nehru's Pearl! Well, actually, uh, it does. It's not much of a surprise if you've ever played a Zelda game before. Then you already know how uh, the, uh, the, the early parts of these games usually go. So we have a letter before we can talk to uh, the King of Red Lions. And uh, I think this is the one from the Rito Chieftain that we uh, helped out earlier. And um, I'm very sorry I let you leave without, uh, without thanking you. Yeah, I didn't get much in the way of thanks when I first uh, left Dragon Roost Island, but at least what he's enclosing within this letter is at least going to somewhat m make up for it, as it is... A piece of heart, which completes yet another heart container! So we got two extra hearts on this part alone, so let's just... Uh, Oh, yeah, right, I gotta talk to the King of Red Lions before I can board him. Uh, la 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 la. So, uh, our next destination is going to be Greatfish Isle, which is located on square D2 
of the maps. I'm just going to climb aboard the, the King of Red Lions, and as you can see, square D2 is where it's marked on the map. So I'm going to change the direction of the we the wind, sorry, the wind, so that it uh, blows to the west, because that's where we are headed. And we're also going to check out a few of the islands on the way there. First island in the path to Greatfish Isle, Ice Ring Isle, which is uh, the icy counterpart to the fire mountain that we met just uh, south of Dragon Roost Island. And talking to the mad fish here, I believe he's going to give us an indication uh, on uh, how to actually get anywhere close to the island because it basically has the same problem as the fire mountain. You, can, you can't get uh, anywhere near the island for now. And he is going to direct us to uh, Mother and Child Isles as well, which is on square B2 of the map. Just be frozen solid as soon as, as you approach the shore. If you go four squares north and three squares west, that would be, as I said, Mother and Child Isles on square B2 of the map. Next island, Southern Fairy Island on square F4. Matt Fish is all the way over there, so I'm just going to have a chat with him, see if he's got uh, anything interesting to say. And it's also a good idea to do so because it adds yet another, uh, another marked square to your C chart. And I guess I should mention that there are five such fairy islands. They're almost completely identical. So, yeah, it's a good idea to have them marked uh, on your C chart. So what's this one going to talk about? Uh, this is just between you and me. Spit it out! An outset island. Okay, beneath the black soil, there's some treasure. I know what this refers to, but uh, that's something we're going to do much later in the game. Next island, Stone Watcher Island, which is located on square E3 of the map. Once again, we're going to talk to the local madfish to have this marked on uh, our sea chart. And I believe that we're going to be introduced to one of these madfish's favorite subjects of conversations, namely the Triumph Forks of Courage. Gee, I wonder what that sounds like. Of course, I'm talking about the Triforce of Courage. So, uh, what he's gonna tell me is that, um, there is a chart inside the island that will allow, supposedly lead to the Triforce of Courage. Unfortunately, once again, this isn't something that we can do right now, so we're just gonna leave it there until we can figure out a way to get there. And we finally made it to Great Fish Isle on square D2 of the map. Unfortunately, the island doesn't look like it's in uh, such good shape as evidenced by the giant cloud of smoke above it. Just like on Dragon Roost Island, in fact. Yes, I see it! It's pretty hard to miss! What has happened to this place? Yeah, the very land was ripped asunder. This place suffered a fate far worse than the island that we've already visited. The island was completely destroyed, and the King of Red Lions is going to explain that we were supposed to meet a water spirit named Jaboon, which we already uh, encountered in Ocarina of Time. It was called uh, Jabu Jabu in that game, but yes, this is officially the exact same character. And here's Quill to explain to us exactly what happened to this place, since apparently we missed uh, the whole scene of carnage and destruction. And uh, since uh, we need some explanation on what happened, then why not uh, have some help from the guy who makes his living by giving out exposition above all else? And obviously we're going to assume that it has to be Ganondorf that did all this. I don't know anyone else in this universe that could rape an island like this. But yeah, apparently Jaboon was able to flee this place before Ganondorf arrived. And he took refuge on Outset Island, the place where this incarnation of Link was born. But uh, of course, since he's a, a, a wanted water spirit, if you will, he had to hide himself uh, beneath a slab of stone that um, not even the pirates could get through. And the reason why uh, the pirates know about it is because Quill, the blabbermouth, told them all about that tale because he thought that they would know where Link is. 
Great job, asshole. So now uh, the pirates are on Windfall Island, so I guess that's going to be our next destination. So Quill's still not done blabbering on, so I have no choice but to keep the rest for next time.